Welcome to this interview with Raymond Antrobus for Writers Make Worlds. Raymond Antrobus is a poet, an educator, and the author of The Perseverance, first published in 2018 by Penned in the Margins. I'm Daniele Nunziata, and I'm delighted to be speaking with Raymond today about how his family has shaped his verse, his views on how poetry should be taught in schools, and the impact of the 2020 coronavirus pandemic on his thinking and writing. A warm welcome, Raymond, to Writers Make Worlds. How important is collaboration with other individuals in creating a body of work, even though a book like The Perseverance is ultimately your words alone on the page? It's essential. Like, there's no... There are so many things I've learned from other poets from you know i'm uh i'm a, a fellow of the complete works program i'm a fellow of the carve Carnum program in the us um and then i've come out of the spoken word scene the spoken word community um i'm part of the spoken word education program from goldsmiths university so there's so many uh, communities, writers, audiences, teachers, um, thinkers, you know, that I've learned from and I think all of them have given me something. So there's, there's absolutely, you know, it's like language itself. It's a accumulation of different histories, different sounds. Um, and I feel like that's that's what the work is a kind of uh, a, how can we say like a collective response <laughs> or something to for me you know uh, to uh, to write and then there's also as well as like kind of community and experiences there's also kind of internally um, like you know, I'm the grandson of preachers. I am uh, the son of two uh, parents who loved poetry and spoke about that and made that part of my own education. So it's, it, you know, it's a catalyst of all of these things. What is it about poetry that appeals to you? And how did you begin writing? A lot of young people, they journal. You know, they have a diary or, you know, uh, and I did that from as far as I, back as I can remember. I'd always wrote stuff down, like stories. And it was actually either stories or journals. And they would be in the same book. Um, and I think it was just someone else seeing my work one day like you know leaving it around and someone else reading what i'd written and then saying oh you write poetry and then me going oh really he's like yeah this is poetry and then i thought wow so it, it kind of took someone else to tell me i was writing poetry um whereas i thought i was just writing <laughs> like i was just it was just a kind of expression it was just a kind of um again something i did in private and the fact that that was kind of the purest memory i have of one of the purest purest memories i have of kind of self-expression and it was this private thing and it was through poetry i think encouraged me to pursue it in that the person who told me oh this is poetry was surprised and that always kind of got me how i was able to surprise people with poetry so even at school uh, when i would write in the back of my english book um and my predicted grade for gcse's wasn't very high but when we had a poetry assignment the teacher would you know would often positively surprised by what i was writing um, you know, some one one teacher accused me of plagiarism for it. You know, like, oh, this, are you sure this is you? Um, and so I think it was just a kind of natural thing for me. But also, um, the one of the privileges I had around poetry was that I was never afraid of poetry. I was never felt any way about owning it, um, considering my 
you know, the relationship that my parents have with poetry, which is a very joyful one, one that was able, was very open and shared. There was never any kind of, um, you know, oh, this is how you write poetry. You have to do these ambient pentameters. You have to know these forms and these ideas. It was very much like, uh, you can, you can, uh, you can rant. You could, you know, my mom loved Adrian Mitchell and she would, you know, recite, uh, tell me lies about Vietnam. And she would talk about how relevant that poem still is. Um, she would talk about William Blake and his kind of uh, outcast perspective, his uh, anti-empire perspective, his decolonial perspective. Um, and then meanwhile, my dad would be talking about Bob Marley and say, you know, Bob Marley's a poet, you know, he's a prophet, you know. Um, and then he would talk about Miss Lou and Linton Kwesi Johnson. Um, and then even when if we'd see um, Jean Binter Breeze or Grace Nichols, when they came on the radio, he'd record them, play them to me, talk about them. So it's like, it was just this source of source of joy source of family source of connection um so in that way all of these things were kind of accidentally nurturing it i, I don't think anyone said you should become a poet i think it was just a, a a practice something that helped me live and understand and want to carry on